Okay, I am now recording. I... Okay, I think I am. No matter how many times I use this fucking program, I never get used to it. And I don't understand how, like, looking at the levels in front of me, Duncan and I spike it constantly, and we sit away from the mic, but I'm, like, it's a few inches from my face, and it's not doing anything. quality program well at least you can always turn it up so hello everybody welcome to episode uh 23 i had to check because uh i forgot it, it's hard to keep track of the numbers when uh boy has the recording schedule been real spotty the last few weeks uh <laughs> I have a guest today, as you can hear. Uh, they've been on here before, and they might have said eight words because it was a terrible recording setup. Uh, hi, They're... I'm Brandon, and uh, I, I believe my con contributions to the podcast I was on was me showing you images on my phone right. every 20 Episode minutes. Episode 13, Nickelodeon's The Loud House. Or the Loud Crowd. Loud House? I don't remember. Yeah, the the show is the Loud the House. Show. Okay. Uh, yeah, the, the the crossover our booming communities have asked for uh, of Power Moose and uh, St. John's local radio legend, <laughs> Pointless Filler. <laughs> Yeah, 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 let me tell you, uh, I, I get a lot of feedback from my audience of uh, you uh, asking me to come on the podcast, so so I, well, I well, couldn't turn it's, down the uh, audience. You know, you're on a good day, 30% of my audience, on a bad day, 50 on a real bad day, 100 <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm... I'm pretty sure there's. If I go look at some of those Snake Pass videos, uh, I'm sure oh, they man. have no, Snake zero Pass views. Is doing amazingly compared to Knack. Knack, Knack is just. Oh, well, let me tell just you. Just crawling to, to finish. Uh, yeah, you streamed Three it times. What, twice now? Okay, and I, I was only there for one of them, so. Now, uh, one of them, I, the, the episodes haven't gone up yet for the third time, but I actually fall asleep. That's, 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 yeah, I, I, you told me about that, and it, just, I, I, you must be excited for Knack, too, is all I'm saying. <laughs> like, I kind of am, but, like, I'm not that stupid. I, I don't see it doing, like, I think... Knack, when it came out, its reviews were like, I don't know, I'm going to guess like a 6.5 Metacritic. Yeah, they were probably like, like, like it, okay, it's a game. Average good to job. good, maybe. I, like, maybe like the highest might have been an 8, well, is what I'm thinking. Well, but with game reviewers, you never Knack know. review right? on Metacritic. What does Knack have on Metacritic? It has... Oh, ooh, 54. Mm. You know, you know what? I'm, I'm not surprised. User score is 65. Yeah, that sounds about and right. And the... Oh! Like, I, 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 <laughs> I heard that. I, I know we've talked about it, but... Uh, and I, I think we talked about it during when, the first batch of streams you did of Knack that... Knack really does didn't seem like a, a game for the Sony audience at the time. No, it came but out. I, I honestly feel like it had the the same thing that Ukulele did, which is like ignoring a lot of the stuff that went on behind the scenes. It's just that's a hard genre to make, and unless you hit it out of the park, that market currently there yeah. is no OKs. It's gonna be bad or great. I I think I think Knack I think it'll will do better, do but I better don't the first see one. it like if Metacritic give this give this a fifty four. I don't see its Metacritic going higher than like seventy five. 
Which is still a pretty significant improvement, but... Now, I, I know for a fact you're, you're a fan of uh, Donkey. I, I mean, yeah, you... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now, uh, I, I think it was like a... Maybe, a, yeah, it was about a month ago now. He he tweeted out an image that was that he captioned with the video game equivalent oh, of committing is suicide. Oh, that the uh, knack and destiny uh, two come out a day between the with the within each other? Yeah, and like I I couldn't <laughs> couldn't help but laugh at that one. I don't remember when that was originally going on that somebody had said that. I want I want to say it was like around. Well, it, 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 was, it was really whenever Knack got have... its release date. Because I think Destiny 2 had its release date first. So when Knack 2's release date came out, everyone was like, Oh, Donkey, what are you going to do? Well, no, I just mean like referring to something as like the equivalent of committing suicide. Oh, I feel like no, no, that, that particular that, that's phrase... That's been for longer than Breath of the Wild. Yeah, I think maybe just Breath of the Wild was the last time you heard it, like, well, like any a lot. The only time it's ever really been used outside of recently, I feel like it's been used a lot more because it's kind of, I mean, I guess it's a meme now. But the only time I ever heard it before well, was yeah, if you especially... released a shooter in November, which was, that's Call of Duty and Battlefield time. Like, you, you just don't do that. Uh, cough, Cough, Titanfall 2 always yeah. sells like garbage for that reason. Yeah, you kind of don't want to compete with the big boys if you can. So, uh, it's been uh, many a week since you've been on here. Uh, what what have you been up to uh, there, Brandon? Actually, I'm just curious. What, what what was the date of the episode you were on? Let me just, let me just pull, just pull oh, it up. Oh, it wasn't. I was going to say, wasn't it summer, uh, it but was, it's summer uh, now. So. The first week of May. So So it's been a little bit. Oh gee. Okay. Um. I I want to say I was done classes for that one. I'm not sure. I think maybe I had like some exams afterwards, and. I mean, those all went fine, and I totally did not fail any of my classes. <laughs> it certainly sounds like you uh, passed with flying colors. Yeah, yeah, there were certainly multiple colors. Um, well, since then, uh, I haven't really done anything except lay around my house all day and uh, occasionally oh, well, good, go and good. see movies. We lead uh, pretty similar lives in that regard. Yeah. Well, and like, like I've barely watched that much anime either lately, so like... I'm already not a good fill-in for Duncan. Eh, it's fine. I mean, I, I was gonna say I haven't watched many much lately either, but that's that's my thing to not watch anime. <laughs> yeah. Uh. I. Um. Well. Uh. Any any games or movies of note? I mean, I, I could walk over there and pick up the pile of tickets I have been keeping since, like, the start of summer. Let me just move I mean, over I, here. I don't, I don't keep tickets, but I do write down every movie I see, so I, I don't lose track. Well, well yeah, I, 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 I started doing it, like, near the start of summer. Mostly it was because, like, I just was too lazy to throw some of them out at some one point. And I was like, you know what, I'm kind of curious what I'll see throughout the summer. All right. Uh, Cars okay. 3. I actually, I actually under missed Cars 3. Despite binging Cars 1 and 2 uh, in a day, I never actually did go and see Cars 3. That's a shame, because, like... Uh, I didn't see Cars 2, and, like, I'm a... I guess you could say I'm a fan of Cars 1. I think Cars, I, I think one. Cars like, it was, 1 is fun. It's a good movie. And I I actually really enjoyed Cars 3. Uh, I think maybe it's because, uh, like, I heard about, like, the spy stuff in the yeah. second one. 
and uh, none of that uh, is well, in Cars okay, so, Three, so uh, it's just it's just a sports movie on, really. a, on a movie that's like uh, four years old now, or whenever Cars Two came out. Uh, <laughs> I think Cars Two was great, except for the fact that its main character is Larry the Cable Guy. If you literally take that entire plot and make it lightning <laughs> instead of uh, Mater, it's a great movie. Because I thought that I thought doing a spy thriller yeah. where everyone was cars was like, and it was different. No one's ever done that before. Like Cars One is, hey, it's cars, so let's do a racing story. Like, of course. But. Uh, I I like I I've seen some of Larry the Cable Guy's movies besides Cars, and like I've watched the blue collar stuff, but. Uh, I mean, I, I think I've seen all three I, of his I'm certainly, movies. I, I certainly at one point in my life was a fan, but that is uh, not me. Okay. Well, I, well, I'm looking at it now. So, like, he was in, like, three movies from 2006 well, be, uh, to 2008. Cars, uh, Cars Again, As... uh, The Tooth Fairy, and... <laughs> uh, okay, I forgot. No, no, let me... T uh, now, the first one... Right out of the gate, they knew they had to have his name attached to sell the movie. So it was called Larry the Cable Guy uh, Health oh, Inspector. Right. I, I do remember seeing commercials for that. Yeah, and... I mean, that's okay. Uh, there's Delta Farce, which had uh, Bill Engvall and Danny Trejo in it as well. Yep. And that's like a... Might be... He's part of like. Uh, I mean, I, I I don't remember what the word for it is where you're like, not part of the army, but like. You go and hang out at the base on weekends, and if the if like there's a war, the army will just pick you up in their truck and send you off. I know there's a word for it, but uh, I'm Canadian, so it doesn't matter to me. Keith David's in that movie too, so I mean that that's interesting. And the last one, which is uh, why I brought this up, is witness protection, which uh, is literally just Larry the Cable Guy as a spy. So, so he did. He went and did after. Was this before or after Cars Two? Because I want to know, did they just lift Cars Two <laughs> from witness protection, or off the success of Cars Two was like we can totally just do that again, but live action? Okay. Well, Cars. Well, Cars Two yep. was twenty eleven. And uh, Witness Protection was 2008. Okay, yeah, I think they saw a hit, and they're like, well, guys, you, uh, here's a sequel. <laughs> what if we did a Larry the Cable sp spy movie? I mean, that's literally the, the only thing that explains why Lightning is not the main character, is they were just blown away by Witness Protection. <laughs> I, I mean, I think that has to do that with, well, like, when, that, when Cars 1 came out... He was a popular yeah, no, character. I mean, that makes sense. And, like, like I get it, because, like, he appeals to quite yeah, a wide I, I audience. Mean, the, the dude is a, a very, I don't want to say world-renowned, but uh, North America-renowned uh, comedian. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean... I imagine he's pretty up there because, like, I, I think Jeff Foxworthy is still, like, the highest-selling stand-up comedy artist I of all time. Be, well, I mean, I can't speak for any of them other than Larry the Cable Guy, but I was listening to someone tell me that, like, in the South, you know, where, you know his people, he'll, he'll sell out football stadiums, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I imagine him, Bill Engvold, and... Ron White could all well, do well, that. No, exactly, and people don't really give them credit. They go, oh, if they're not big in this one city, they're nobodies, but sell more tickets than anybody else. I, I, I think, I, I mean, you and me have watched quite a bit of stand-up comedy in well, our time, and course. I think... I mean, who could forget those just for last 2003 reruns? Yeah, I think, I think though, like... For, like, a normal person, like, you could get them to mention Jeff and Larry, but I don't think they would know who Bill or Ron White is. Yeah, I, I can agree with that. 
They are definitely uh, the lesser known of them. And like they, they didn't even make it big as like actors or anything. Like there's people who don't listen to like Robin Williams stand up or anything. I was talking about Robin Williams, but there's people who the other day. know who he was. I think I have a CD kicking around. Oh. I, I probably just watched some on uh, YouTube. Unpopular at this point, opinion. Though. I thought he was a terrible comedian. Yeah, I, I, his stand-up's not the best. I, I think uh, who else is there? A lot of people will say Jerry Seinfeld's stand-up isn't bad, but I mean, it's okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I actually would actually put them kind um, of in the same boat of like if they were to come to the city and tickets were reasonable I'd probably go but I wouldn't if they were more than you know if they cost what they would actually cost I'd be like no I don't really care that much and I mean uh, I don't know if you've ever listened to any of Adam Sandler's stand up Ah, it's about as good as his recent movies. Great. But, I mean, that's an example of product of your time. I mean, because he was a pretty good stand-up, and that's why people were like, you should be in movies. Uh, well, it, I think a lot of it is, like, we, we've all heard him do that funny yeah. voice he likes to do. And a lot of his stand-up comedy is doing the funny voice to make a mediocre joke funnier? Well, I mean, I, gee, uh, I, I haven't heard uh, any of that on YouTube lately. Well, I, it's part of why I don't care for recent uh, Gabriel yeah, and Yeah, I pretty much checked out lately. him as well. Like, the last... Basically, as soon as he was like, yeah, I'm gonna go full in on calling myself Fluffy. Yeah. Yeah, that's how it was kind of when I was like, I, I don't know. Because, like, like I, him doing a girl voice is funny a few times, but every stand-up special, it gets a little old. Yeah. But, I mean, Cars 3, though, good movie. I'd recommend it. Uh, Captain Underpants. Uh, clearly, uh, I've well, only no, seen well, good movies this I mean, summer. It got okay reviews, and I, it, that's another one I meant to see, but it just didn't. I, I feel like it might have left theaters really um, quickly, and that's probably why I didn't get to it. I, I don't know. I feel like it stuck around here for a while, but I, I think maybe there just wasn't enough coming out, and it was still well, actually I'll, selling tickets. I'm also a piece of garbage. Movie. Like, there is... One, like, this city has, like, seven movie theaters, and even though I can get to all of them, three of them from walking and the other ones by bus, if it's not at the one I like to go to, I'm not going to see that movie. Yeah, no, I get ya. Uh, I, I kind of miss when this city had more than one theater, because at least there were options. Yeah. Uh... But Captain Underpants was good. It, uh, I mean, if you've read the books, you know there's quite yep. a lot of toilet humor, which is definitely in the movie. I, I mean, I was just more more than anything happy to see that movie existed because, like, that is talk about missing the like your opportunity. The books were huge, fifteen plus years ago. Yeah, I, I mean. I, I know they, like, re-released them at the bookstores and everything, and, like, I, I think a reason they probably stayed popular and made the movie was, uh, you remember, like, the scholastic book things you could order from in school? Yeah. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure they would, they just have the full box set in those every couple well, months, I, I mean, probably. I think I was looking... Around when the movie came out. I think there was, like, a book that came out as recently as 2011. <laughs> oh, jeez. But, I mean... Oh, jeez. Wow, uh, 2015. Yeah, um... 97, 2 and 99, 
2000, 2001, 2 and 2003, uh, 2006, then like a six year break till 2012, and then yeah, I'll, the last you know one what? was 2015. I, they found their niche. Well, well, I mean, the guy writes other series too, and like they're like Diaper Baby, and I think Dog Man or something. I, I, I mean, what what else would that person write, really? But yeah, but I mean, I, I liked watching the movie because, uh, just like animation wise, it used yeah, more than one style. That's been pretty, it. Like there was that's a sock puppet with, scene. Uh, that studio lately. I'm saying that studio because I'm totally blanking on who Which, did it. Which uh, is uh, It's DreamWorks yes. Animation. <laughs> sure. Um, I I think Blue Sky probably helped out and whatnot. Uh, but uh, watching it because I mean it was only what yeah, a few months ago. Pretty recent. Yeah, June. Um. Just the way it was animated, I was like, man, it really is a shame that Sony canceled Popeye because it kind of, kind of looked the same how the characters were animated and whatnot. Speaking of which, the Emoji movies do, uh, doing yeah. great out yeah. here. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I, I've been obviously, uh, being in the industry and whatnot, I've been talking to a lot of people about the Emoji movie lately. Um, yeah. And now I, I, I want to see it in like. I know, when you hear a movie's bad, going to see it is just bad. Like, don't give bad movies your money. That that's how they keep making bad movies. Yeah, I think I shared the, uh, the critic scene where he just says, "If the movie's bad, just yeah. don't go." But like at the same time. I want to see why it's bad because, I mean, I'm like every other movie goer or reviewer. Like, if I don't know the reviewer personally, I just look at the score and then maybe a quick summary. I never go into like, oh, why is it bad? Like, is the dialogue shitty or, you know, this, that, the other thing. But uh, looking at everything that Sony's been doing lately, their quality is all over the place. And it's because they keep slapping their names on other studios and then they get the blame for it like I don't yeah uh, I was gonna say I don't even know if Sony actually even did emoji a movie but it uh, totally did and I mean their last two movies they released I enjoyed both of those because I mean you and I went to see Smurfs together yeah, and the last movie they released before that uh, was, uh, I think it was Goosebumps yes. that they helped with. I wouldn't, I mean, I, I wouldn't technically count that, but technically that was their last movie before that. Yeah. And I mean, before that was yeah. Hotel Transylvania. Like their, their next movie recently got a trailer, uh, The Star, which looks terrible. Like, it, it visually, we're talking it's 15 years old. It looks really bad. Uh, and it's because another studio did it, and Sony just slapped their name on it. I don't know why. I'm sure if I looked into it enough, I could find out why. But Okay, yeah, I heard about this. Yeah, it's the Bible movie, right? Or, or it has something to yeah, do with the Bible? Yeah, it's uh, the story of the birth of Jesus from the... Uh... The perspective of a donkey. Uh, oh, uh, well, why don't they just <laughs> remake Donkey Ollie? Uh, so, just because I was curious... Okay, actually, how did I get here? Because I'm just on, like, a Wikipedia loophole while we talk about these movies. Yeah, I'm looking at their... Uh, like, I'm on the Sony Pictures animation page right now, and I'm looking at their um, upcoming films. Right, I, I went to uh, Tommy Leonidas... Uh, the director of the Emoji movie, because I just wanted to see what else he's done. 
I, I feel like I did this the other day, and like it was something, something. Well, like okay, so before this, he did Kung Fu Panda: Secret of the Masters, which uh, I don't know. That's isn't that like the TV uh, series or something? Oh, it's or a, a short film, film attached to Kung Fu Panda Two. Ah, so he didn't even do Kung uh, Fu Panda Two. Then he Panda was the 2. director for Igor, a film I've never seen, but I I'm super familiar with the the cover of it. Yeah, I, I think it aired on Teletoon once, and maybe I but watched like, the, like the, some of it. The real kicker here uh, is before this, he did Lilo and Stitch 2 in Kronk's <laughs> New Groove. Uh, now, Lilo and Stitch 2, he was yes. the director. Uh, I, I actually like that movie because it's the one that sets up the yes. TV series. And, and I mean the TV series. What I mean, it was all right, and the movie's okay. I'm I'm a I'm a big fan. Um, Crunk's New Groove. It says he does the story, and I have not watched Crunk's New Groove despite owning the Blu-ray DVD combo pack of both the <laughs> Emperor's movies. Uh. I actually uh, spent a lot of time talking about Lilo and Stitch yesterday uh, because to go into the only noteworthy thing I did in the last uh, many days, or I guess, I guess many weeks since I last recorded the podcast, was uh, for the first time in, I think, honestly, years, multiple years of uh, starting a game and not moving until I beat it. And uh, I beat... Uh, Tara's story in Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep. Oh yeah, she's got the... I, I know she goes to Lilo and Stitch, like the spaceship. I, I feel like... Yeah, they all do. They all do, don't they? Yeah. Um, it's It's been uh, six years since I played that game, so you'll have to Fill me in uh, on what well, happened a little. Pretty much nothing. It's a, it, it's a pretty sparse game. But. Yeah, I feel like, from what I remember, that that particular level was wander around a big uh, and yeah, confusing sure map. And uh, the environment I was playing in, because I was not at my own house, uh, was like terrible screen glare mixed with like it being a PSP game I literally couldn't find a door even with having a map telling me the wall the door is on I still couldn't find it at one point that uh I mean I know you and I both like the Kingdom Hearts series that game has some real stinkers for levels in it, and at least, like, every entry. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely does. Uh, I don't I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure you said you finished Dream Drop Distance yeah. by now. Yeah, that, that was the... In my quest to beat uh, them all again, that was the that was the first one. Okay, um... <laughs> so, so, I played that when it came out on the 3DS... Uh, the Tron level in that game's a f just uh, yeah, a mess. Yeah, because it's Neutron. Well, not even that. Like, I don't mind it too much. I mean, it's the same case with the Pirates of the Caribbean level, where uh, you have Donald... Well, well, I guess you don't have Donald and Goofy in that one, but you have at least Sora standing next to live-action yeah, well, people. I, mean, I, I put out a hot tweet about it when I was in... Uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean world. Where I was like, it, this looks so stupid. But at the same time, if... If they keep changing the characters for each world, they should change them for the live-action worlds too. So give me live-action Sora, Donald, and Goofy. That's that's what we all need. Just, just you... At this point, just use the good models that you save for the good cutscenes. 
Man, I, I smell something. But, like... That makes me feel like I left the stove on. But I can see the stove, and I didn't. So, maybe the place under me is on fire? Uh... Um, how bad is your setup for recording again? Fair point. I mean, I mean, it's fine. It's just my... I've... I, other than, uh... The addition of talking to you, I, I have done this setup before. Okay, that's not too bad. Uh, uh so, so breaking news, because, uh, with a, uh... Computer in front of me, I can just go through the news. Um... Uh, you know what? I had some news we'll, I wanted we'll to talk about We'll go over this one well, first. Cause... Now, she's not dead, so the news could be worse. But uh, legendary voice director, Andrea Romano, retired. I recognize her name. And I don't when you know see why. her, you'll be like, oh, that girl who's been in every like DC animated movie uh, behind-the-scenes video ever. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, like, I don't even have to... Look, funny enough, if I type her name, uh, just besides some like unrelated things, the fourth thing that shows up is uh, her name with the <laughs> word Justice League beside it. Uh, you heard about June for yes. right, right? And there was a, uh, I mean, anytime like a, a quote unquote legend dies, there's always some art that gets made, and there's one of like uh, Rocky, like as an angel flying up and Bullwinkle crying and I was like oh shit man that cuts deep yeah uh you know I'm surprised I haven't seen any of like Sylvester and Tweety crying yeah I, I think it's one of those things where I mean I, I mean Rocky was her her poster role I guess so yeah and I, I mean she wasn't like the original person yeah. that played that character I, I think it was I think the original one was a black woman whose name I can't remember but like she she's played her longer than her and like I mean I, I'm sure I've heard the original voice but like I've heard June Ferreira's more recently yeah uh now the news I want to talk about uh I, I don't know if you saw one of Ryan uh, Reynolds' are you news about tweets. The, our first look at Domino. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how I feel about it. I mean, I feel fine. I. But... Uh, I mean. Oh, I, I tried to look up the photo and got redirected to Domino's. My only beef with it, really, and because I don't care about Domino enough as a character to really care about uh, the slight... It's not even a costume change. It's literally just a hair change, is I prefer her original look to the new look, but uh, that's fine. Yeah. Um, did you ever play the, sure did the game? Okay, I remember pirating at one point and like I, I left Deadpool's apartment and then dropped it like five seconds into the first level or something but uh, Domino in that uh, is kind of like the version of her I yeah. see posted everywhere and, and like she's got like the hair but a thing the new one doesn't have and I don't know if they just aren't, aren't planning on it or what is I, I always liked how she was covered in white face paint. See, I'm, I'm curious how they're going to tackle her powers in the movie, if they will at all, or they'll just make her, like, a, you know, a fighter. Because her powers are bananas and arguably make the least sense of any power ever. I don't remember. Uh, what well, well to, to anyone who doesn't know, uh, it's just she telekinetically alters probabilities to give her good luck oh, to be okay, like oh yeah. 
if someone's like, you've only got a 1% chance to make that shot, she can just make it a 99% chance to make that shot instead. Which is like, technically the yeah. strongest possible magic ever. Yeah, I'm on the, like her Wikipedia page now. And like, it gets to the point where she's like, where it's explaining her powers. And it starts out by talking about like how she has exceptional markmanship and hand-to-hand skills, but she also possesses probability altering powers. And like the reason she has exceptional markmanship and hand-to-hand skills is a result of the power. Uh, really, I mean, technically, yeah. I, I mean, hand-to-hand skills and, and, and firing a gun also takes talent. But I mean, once you get the basics down, if you can just make it so you but always I, I, hit, I think with or always punch and dodge. You I, I think with the flavor good. of Deadpool, I don't imagine like I'm actually kind of worried that they're just gonna make her girl uh, uh, like Gwenpool basically make her girl Deadpool. Yeah, I can see that. Because they're like, oh, if the first one was such a hit, what if there was two of them? Ooh, yeah, that might be a little rough. Uh, I, I mean, for a movie, I wouldn't like it. Um, I know there's an episode of one of the Spider-Man cartoons where Deadpool shows up. And for that cartoon, Spider-Man can basically, like, do the Cusco thing where he could draw over the frame and whatnot. So that episode just turns into him and Deadpool having a fight like that. Yeah, I don't know, I... Like, I like Deadpool, and the uh, teaser thing for uh, Deadpool 2 made me laugh, but I, if I think about it, I'm kind of already sick of him. Uh, I mean, even people who don't read comics, and like, even before the Deadpool movie came out, there were just so many, like images of Deadpool floating around online and whatnot that, like, you couldn't really go anywhere without seeing him. Yeah. He's a little too popular. Because, like, haha, this superhero likes chimichangas. Or, look, he made a mountain of pancakes. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, he, he is one of the few... I mean, really, he's up there with, like, the big ones in the, like even if people don't like superheroes, they would buy something with his face on it. Yeah. Yeah, like, he's... I I could... If I went to the gym, I could see a guy wearing that instead of a Batman or Superman one. I mean, I'm I'm excited. Oh for yeah, don't don't movie. get me wrong. I, I say I'm I'll sick of it, it, but the, when it comes out, I'll still watch it. Yeah, I I, I mean, I've talked about before how I'm kind of sick of Marvel movies. Yeah. But like the last the last couple months, I think I've gone and seen every one that came well, out. I keep seeing them, and I I do, and I've been called out on it a bunch. Because I, I keep publicly saying, like, I'm done. But they keep releasing movies that I would... They're, like, exceptions, I guess. Like, uh... Yeah. Pulling up my list here. So, like, the, la- the last two. Yeah, the last two were exceptions. Like, I really like Guardians of the Galaxy. And I did think Guardians of the Galaxy was different from the other Marvel movies. So, of course, I'd go see the second one. And... Spider-Man Homecoming yeah. isn't technically a Marvel movie, but sort of is and isn't, and blah, blah, blah. So I had to go see that one, too. And Yeah, all of that's a mess. All, all of the stuff with Sony and whatnot, it's, it's all a, a yeah, great Yeah, I mean, mess. we'll see what comes of it. It, it. it gets more interesting when, obviously, Marvel's going to want to keep Spider-Man around. But... Sony's going to keep tightening that leash of, like, 
how much they're going to let him do because they want to make the money from it, obviously. And I can't blame them. They are the ones who own him. At this point, I'm surprised that Marvel hasn't been like, hey, Disney, please just put a <laughs> bid on all of that. I mean, I think they missed the boat on that one. Like, they would have had to do that before Homecoming because now seeing how popular Homecoming is... Sony's not going to want to get rid of it. Especially where they've already green greenlit, uh, like, multiple Spider-Man related movies. Well, well, yeah, like, even, like, we were talking about Sony animation earlier, and I guess, like, they're supposed to work on a yeah, Spider-Man movie. Yeah, there's supposed to be a new point. animated Spider-Man movie, which I think is going to theaters, which will be interesting. But then, like... They're doing Venom, they're doing uh, Black Cat and Sable, and, you know, they'll probably try to do their own Avengers and build the Sinister Six, I imagine. I mean, more than anything, I'm excited for Venom. Yeah, I mean, I honestly don't know enough about Venom. Almost all of the Spider-Man stuff I'm a fan of never touched it. Uh, I think what I know about Venom is, I, I mean, it's Eddie Brock. He worked for a rival paper to Peter Parker at some point. And in some continuities, they were friends in high school, but I, I don't think they'll go for that. But uh, I, I, I just like Venom's design more than anything, which is why I yeah. think I'm excited for the movie. Like, like, especially with who they have playing him, I'm excited to see a big, beefy Venom. Yeah. Well, my big thing is I'm curious what Venom look they're going to go for, if they're going to do the, like, the classic one or the uh, the sort of newer version where he doesn't look all gooey i guess where he looks he looks like a black hulk really is the newer one yeah the newer one it's kind of like i i guess you could say he's hulk really just a but, big uh, black thing yeah he's always been kind of the same size and however gooey he is depends on like yeah the artist i guess how lazy they are but uh, I I I mean, worst comes to worst, they'll just give them like black charred skin. Cause there's there's no way they're gonna have them like dripping all the time. I mean, probably not. But they might use it like s sparingly for effects and whatnot. But I mean, at the same time, it's Sony have their own CG studios that they can use so yeah and anything could happen so how about that hot news oh you, you got more do you good I thought we'd have to fill oh, more time no. talking about Marvel I mean, movies barely the news. well I, I guess it's kind of news uh, I don't remember where I saw it Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, somewhere. The internet. It's all that matters. Hmm. The uh, the goddamn fiasco that is uh, Mighty Number no. Nine's last fuck you to... to oh, oh, the box. God. So, anyone who ordered the physical edition of Mighty Number no. 9, first of all, they've had months to realize they made the mistake before it actually got shipped to them. And when they got it, there's no game. It's just a box and a game manual. You have to build the box yourself, and the game manual doesn't even fit inside. It's beautiful. Like, to have a story be, like, such a feature of, like, what a joke, and then it goes away because everything in mainstream media just goes away after a day... But then it come back with this level of ridiculous. Yeah, 
Yeah, no, it's it, it's the gift that keeps on giving. And it's still going to keep giving cuz like it's been a while since we've heard anything uh red oh, ash God. related which is the, You know what? I don't know if it was. Um uh, I mean, I'm on the Wikipedia page for it right now, and it still says, like, that... to be announced. And, like, I think there's still a an anime for uh, it planned. When I type in, is Red Ash cancelled, the top two things that come out is, is Red Ash still happening, and what happened to Red Ash? So, uh, no, it doesn't look like it's cancelled. It's just, uh, nobody knows what's going on there. Yeah, and like like it it's it passed its funding goal, I think, by like a good like thirty. Or I, oh, I guess no, no, uh, no. uh Red Ash wasn't going to pass, but then some Chinese company gave them the rest of the money. Yeah. So yeah, they were like three hundred thousand short. And then a Japanese company called Fuse said they would finance the Great. game. Great. Which, um... I don't know anything about Fuse. Uh, well, I know it was a pretty subpar game that everyone forgets Insomniac put out. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> the company, though, um... Like, like I can't find anything oh, on this Chinese company. Great, great company, then. So, I mean, maybe they're funding Red Ash as, like, a triad mm -hmm. money laundering scheme or something. So, uh, n n new game. New game came out this week. Uh, uh. uh it's like they didn't stop. Oh, uh, you know what? So I actually watched a video yep. on, on this game. Uh, the other day, and uh, I had like two, like an hour long of gameplay. I, I sat down ready to watch it, and I watched 15 minutes and stopped watching. Okay, that game we feel pretty terrible. similarly then, because like, okay, I think everyone can agree. <laughs> uh, Super Giant Games, Bastion, damn fine game. It's a game I never got around to finishing. I, I, I mean, even well, I actually don't think I ever beat it either. But it's a good game. Um, but like I, th yeah, I think it's a good game, and I think, I, I think I already own well, a copy then, yeah, of Transistor. Next Transistor, which I own, played, S S I did beat that one. I liked it, but not as much as Bastion, which is weird that it's the one I beat. But yeah, but I did the same thing for Pyre. Yeah. Is like when I finally saw gameplay, I was like. Wow, yeah, I'm not even going to buy that one. That just looks terrible. Yeah, like... Uh, I, I mean, maybe I would buy it on sale, but the, like, sports gameplay really didn't appeal no, to me I mean, at all. Saying you'd buy something on sale isn't saying much, because there's a lot of garbage I'll buy just because it's on sale. Uh, oh, oh yeah, like I like I know for a fact I've bought multiple people copies of Bad Rats, so I think I own both versions of Bad Rats on Steam. I I think they were going mm. what what they were aiming for was like admirable of like hey let's mix fantasy and sports, but uh, it just game game doesn't make sense it doesn't like like if i'm gonna compare it to other fantasy sports games uh guess what you can play blitzball in final fantasy 10 and harry potter quidditch has its own game so and it's worse than both of those it, to me i mean i, I didn't play it yeah, yeah well i mean i remember the last time i played final fantasy 10 and I know for a fact you get something for winning the first yep. Blitzball match you play. Uh, it drops you in with a very poor tutorial and a, like, 20-minute cutscene before it. So that, like, 
there's no point to reset to try and get whatever the thing is. But uh, bl Blitzball is a mess. No, I, I mean, it is. But at least that sport makes sense. Like, Pyre doesn't... It, okay, if we pretend the world of Pyre is real, it's a game where scoring points isn't getting a ball through a hoop. It, it's uh, killing yourself, which doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I, I like it also it's like like bastion and transistor were quite similar yeah. in games and and this is i think way too different well it's it's very samey to transistor's final boss fight but then it's just that boss fight and that's it Uh, I will say this: Whoever did the uh, character art, I mean, good job. I mean, yeah, it looks surprise, pretty good. Surprise, the, the art looks amazing. I, I'm sure. Once again, the music's probably okay. Uh, but I mean, art and music can only take me so far with a game. I wanna, I want something that's fun yeah. to play. Pretty, yeah. I mean, a, a a story can only fall only benefit a game so like, much, in my opinion. Um, if you're a movie, I'll go watch you just for your visuals, because that's only like ninety minutes out of my day. But uh, yeah, yeah, a game can be well, a lot longer, especially where you're going to play the game. If it sucks to play, it doesn't matter how good that art is. I'm trying to think of what's the best looking game that played terribly. Um, I don't really know. Uh, now, I've never played this game, and I've been meaning to for a long time, but uh, how's the uh, game play, Hokami? Uh, it's fine. <laughs> I mean, like, if it came out today, it probably wouldn't be great, but... Okay. Uh, how's the gameplay in the Wii <laughs> port of Okami? <laughs> I mean that that might that might be your answer. Because I'm not, I, I I'm sure it's great on the PS2. I know I have one friend who says it's his favorite game of all time. I hear that a lot. I think those people are wrong, but. I mean, this person in particular, I don't take a lot of uh, stock into their opinion because uh, th they think uh, the ninja theory, Devil May Cry, is the best one. I mean... And, like, I could see how somebody thinks that, but they also think, like, story and character-wise, the other ones are really bad and, like... Uh, I, I'm familiar with the character and story of yeah. all of them. And that, that Ninja Theory one, Dante, he's just a terrible person who doesn't Dante. grow too much in that game. <laughs> yeah, Dante, as uh, the kids I like mean, to call I mean, I thought him. that game was fine. I don't... I, I actually put it above Devil May Cry 2, but it's definitely below the other three. Yeah. I mean, like, one... I, I can see why somebody would not like Devil May Cry 1, and it's because it takes too much of it from being a Resident Evil game originally. I mean, that's one of those things that is, like, you don't really notice it unless someone tells you. Like, if you didn't know, I don't think it's a, a con. But once you hear, oh, this was supposed to be RE4, you're like, oh, a lot of this makes sense now. Yeah, well, yeah, it's got a lot of survival horror stuff, like, uh, backtrack in particular. I know there's one point you have to go to, like, the underwater section or whatever of one. 
And I mean, pretty much everybody knows that 2 isn't a very good game. Yeah. Since it's just, it, it's big and empty, which is its biggest problem. I, I feel like it's one of those things where if I were to play it again, I'm sure it's not as bad as I remember. Yeah, I've been, I've been meaning to go back and play too. Because like a few years back, I got like the PS2 five-year anniversary collection that have one, two, and three. And uh, I played some of one and then just went back to playing three some more. Because I mean, four is a good game, but I think three is still my favorite. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that's probably the the popular opinion. Uh, I, I think... I think if 3 had... like, this, the style switching that 4 had, it would have been a perfect game, I guess you could say. Yeah. Oh, what else do you have for uh, news, nothing. anyway? How, how, how exciting. Oh. Uh, now, there, there is something I've been meaning to talk about for a while that uh, wasn't, wasn't technically waiting for you, but just talking that, looking for anyone else, really, that could uh, <laughs> talk about it. Cause, well, because it would be a weird thing to, for me to just talk about alone. Um. Well, yeah, and I know when you had Marsha on, you got to talk about a different subject that you wouldn't necessarily I talk about. I already forgot I did one with her. <laughs> it was... Yep. It's the most recent one, isn't it? It's only like two weeks ago. <laughs> no, it was two. Or is it three now? Um, okay. No, it's... Uh, I mean, I'm not the first one to <clears throat> break this. Or talk about it. But uh, the, the speculation and given the copyrights that Nintendo just took, uh, we're probably going to see a N64 classic. Yeah, yeah, I heard about that. Uh, and and uh, now a lot of people were like, oh man, but with an N64 classic, it's only going to be able to fit like 10 games. I was like, are you insane? Like, those no. games are tiny compared to today. No, it could easily fit 30 games. Uh, the problem is, I don't know if they should go with 30 games, because I don't think they'll be able to get 30 good games from that system. No, I don't think so either. Well, so ba basically the question was, if they were to make a, a N64 Classic or Pro, whatever the fuck they keep calling them, minis, um, what are yeah. the games that, like, would be on there, and slash, like, what are the games you want on there? Like, the obvious is, like, of course, Mar of course, Mario 64, Mario 64. of course, Zelda, Zelda's probably, S S Star Fox, uh, l let's just get this out of the way right away, let's talk about yeah, Rare. Yeah, so, uh, every Rare game, um... Uh, every p people would want every rare game, and we get Donkey Kong, and that's it. I don't. We, we Nintendo would have to fight hard for Banjo Kazooie and Tui. Yeah. And like, like I think Tui is a fine game, but uh, actually, there, it's, there's a good it's chance a bit that, of a mess. Uh, they probably couldn't get any of Rare's games because I mean they just put out. I mean, just put out in big quotes but uh the rare replay collection well that's why i said they they'll probably get donkey kong 64 because they were able to get it for the uh oh, okay wii u yeah, e-shop forget that and like they didn't have to change anything or anything if i recall either like it still had like jet pack and all those other rare games in it But I, I like I don't know how much they have to wheel and deal with Microsoft for that. Um, 
I mean, I know what my most wanted game for it is, and uh, that would be Harvest uh, Moon a 64. I have never touched. Uh, well, for since I guess I'll explain it. It's a farming well, I mean, simulator I know what game. It is. Yeah. Oh, geez, there's more rare games than I thought that should probably be on that thing. Because uh, I, I, I completely forgot about yeah. Conquer. I forgot about uh, Perfect Dark. and I, I don't think they would put Goldeneye on it just because, like, that's, like, besides being what I believe is a rare game, I think it's rare. Uh, that's another series of licensing issues with yeah. uh, James well, Bond. Well, like, especially when they put out uh, Goldeneye Reloaded, they had to change it from Pierce Brosnan to Daniel Craig. Yeah, but uh, Perfect Dark is, it came out after Goldeneye, and Goldeneye hasn't aged well. So, <laughs> Perfect Perfect Dark's an improvement, but I, it's a uh, bit of a mess. I just pulled up a list of the 75 best N64 games. Oh, oh this is going to be a treat, from I can tell. the bottom, I'm not going to read all of them. I'm, I'm going to only say the ones that I think are, like... Uh. I'd be cool with it being on the system. Uh, which, which, which the first uh, one? You know, none of us said oh, Smash yet, by the way. <laughs> okay, well, if they made an, any, uh, an N64 yes, classic, would. Smash is uh, kind Quest of Quest 64. Oh, jeez. Uh, so that's... That's a, like, bare-bones RPG for the N64, and I think... Besides Paper Mario, I think it's the only RPG uh, in mean, the system. It, it wouldn't surprise me if that's true. Um, uh, you know what? I, I'm forgetting about Castle, like some other like Castlevania real stinkers. Eh, I don't. I don't think that one. I I don't think you level up or anything. I know shit about one, it, but, so. uh, I know there's like. There's a specific third part, uh, party one that I can't remember. Aiden Chronicles, I think, and that's it's not a good game. Uh, I guess Ogre Battle sixty four is an RPG, and that's okay. But uh, other than that, I don't think there's much. Uh, the Robot Raising Simulator did didn't come out here. Oh. couple custom robo games maybe uh let's see what else would i want on there uh an army men game because i fucking love those oh sorry just heroes is great uh, i think a pokemon stadium would be good to have um, maybe just the first one if it's between stadium and snap Kirby. i'd say snap but mm -hmm. ideally have both yeah yeah snap's a better choice um I, I don't know if I've ever talked to you about how Pokemon Company is kind of a mess with letting Nintendo actually use Pokemon. No, I'd, I'd believe it. It, it, it like, we're, I, I think it's a hassle to get characters for Smash Bros. and whatnot. And, like, I think even then they had to, be like, hassle them again to be able to make the Amiibos, because I think... It's just like a mess with dealing with Pokemon Company. Uh, what else? Uh, Kirby Kirby 64. Yeah, yeah, no, I just said Kirby and uh, Yoshi as well. Yoshi's Story is another one. F-Zero X. Uh, another rare one would be uh, Diddy Kong Racing, but uh, they probably put I, I Mario can Kart 64 instead. I can almost guarantee they would put Mario 64 instead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... Oh, I was just looking at... Uh, Resident Evil 2. I, I mean, t I, I guess. That's that's one of the, like... Uh, Nintendo 64 emulators, last I checked, were still, like, really hard to get running properly, and uh, that's one of those games that's... Specifically, the N64 version is just hard to do. Oh, I can... It wasn't recorded, but I, I I think I can hear those chips. 
Oh yeah. Uh, before we started uh, recording, I uh, had the uh, just the fucking food disaster that was a a donair samosa. So, so samosa like that little like food thing, like it's like a like a triangular yeah, pizza pocket. For for those <laughs> listening, I'm white by the way. I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> it's a I don't it's that shit um, I used to buy constantly in high school, but I don't remember if we actually hung out when I did that all the time. I don't think we did, but like I, I know where you would have bought it because I uh I know you weren't the only one at our high school who would go to the city market to yeah. buy samosas. But Donaire is uh an odd choice. Yeah, it, it, it was pr uh, pretty, pretty so not great. Uh, I'm looking at more N64 games, and, like, I keep looking at uh, third-party ones in particular. So things like, uh, l l like, if Nintendo was able to get the Tony Hawk Pro Skater game on there, that'd be pretty yeah. good. Uh, they might be able to swing some of the Bomberman games. Which uh, the N sixty four ones are Mega Man sixty four. Okay. <laughs> that game. Uh, I I know those people who are like yeah Mega Man Legends. I really want them to finish that series. Uh, I've played, I, I've played both versions of the first one, the N sixty four and the uh, PlayStation one version. There might be a Dreamcast version or something. <laughs> that game's not good. It's it's a bad game. Uh, it's one of those characters that basically their first time putting them in a 3D space did not work. Yeah. I mean, I, I liked the game as a kid because, like, easily entertained and whatnot, but in hindsight, it's not very good. Yeah. So, so since we're talking about N64 games, and you mentioned not very good... Uh, I want to talk about a trend I've noticed, which is we've gotten to the age where games we would play and love when we were kids are at the age where people are like, no, these games are actually garbage. And, like, a few of them it's been going on for years, like, mostly because people say they're the best games of all time, but uh, Ocarina of Time and uh, Final Fantasy VII, you can find anybody yep. shitting on those games. Uh, but recently, I've heard a lot of people shitting on Super Mario 64. Um, well, the, I mean, I could find things to say about that game that are negative. But, so he, here's essentially what I would say. Because I actually had this conversation recently, but it was about Mario Kart. But I can use the exact same attack, and I think it holds up just as well. There is no reason to play Super Mario 64 because it has been done better more recently. Now, I wouldn't say Mario 64 is a bad game. I think it functions fine. It's a little dated, obviously, in the fact that it's a 3D world with only one fucking stick sucks, but... I, I, I kind of want to disagree with you on this one. Because, like, yeah, Mario games have been done to death, but other than Sunshine and Odyssey that comes out, there's not really too many, like, Mario well, no, but that, 64. But that's what I mean, is if, if you want to play a 3D platforming Mario adventure game, play Galaxy, Galaxy 2, uh, do... Uh, uh, yeah, I forgot Galaxy. You know, Odyssey comes out in a few months. Do, or even, like you said, do Sunshine. They're, they're all arguably better and are more recent. And, and when I say recent, I don't even mean from like a graphical standpoint because I'm not that much of a humbug about graphics. It's just gameplay has evolved. And Mario 64 is a pretty rudimentary platformer. But, I mean, it's a product of its time. It's like the first... One of, one of the first 3D games ever. 
Yeah, I, see, well, here's the thing with Mario 64, specifically, is, like, when a lot of people try to be negative about it, they'll talk about, like, how Mario is hard to control or whatnot, but, um, in my opinion, besides, like, the occasional, like, maybe a there's a weird piece of geometry which doesn't happen too often. Mario controls. I don't know great if I would that say game. great, but I don't remember ever having any issues with it for sure. Uh, I mean, there is the fact that yes, you're using an N64 controller, so you have to like learn how to use it first before you can get well, yeah, his but, uh, full range that of almost movement. can't be counted against the game because that's the whole system. Yeah, but uh, like a lot of people will say like he's too slippery and he, and whatnot in that game, but like if you stop, Mario will stop in that game. And he'll go he'll move where you want to move. And like Sunshine and Galaxy are pretty similar. But I, I think 64 it might still be a little tighter. And and, and, I, and 64, like, it has some bad levels, but most of the levels are okay. I, I think, uh, like, we'll see when Odyssey comes out, but... Uh, I mean, my, my argument does kind of fall apart because I think uh, Sunshine and the Galaxy games are different yeah, you're, enough. You're, that like if you specifically wanted a 3D platformer like those are different because they all have gimmicks right well yeah that's a that's a big thing with Sunshine too is it's based around the, uh, and, the water and, pump like, yes Odyssey has the hat thing but I, I think the hat thing is less a gimmick and more like an evolution of like you know we need to do something with this series yeah, uh, well, see, I'm wondering if it's going to be a Sunshine case where, um, if you've ever heard people talk about Sunshine, sometimes their favorite levels are the ones where the water yeah. thing gets stolen away from you. And I'm wondering if, like, the controls in Odyssey will be good enough Cause uh, I I I don't know. I, I feel like Mario's gonna control in that game where it won't be like as much as a gimmick. But I don't know how some of the outfits are gonna behave and whatnot. It, it's uh, it's hard to say. I I mean, look, I I because like the hat's a free jump at some points too, which I, I don't know how well it's gonna. I mean, help. It's. I mean, it's just neat, I guess, like, I think there will be some learning. Like, there's going to be a, the the first introductory period where people forget that you can jump off the hat and be like, that jump's just impossible. Yeah. But it, it is a game that already, because of the different things you can take over, I'm curious to see how speed runs are going to go. Now, now I, I don't know how much you've looked into taking over. Uh, I think I might have told you this at one point, but it's you can't just take over every enemy. That would make sense, but I've also seen that you can take over inanimate objects. Because in the most recent GIF I saw, he took over a tree. <laughs> Good. No, um... Like, I was reading at one point, like, for common enemies, like Goombas and whatnot... You can only take over, like, some of the bigger ones. I mean, that... It makes sense. Like, they don't want you just doing it all the time. Because at the end of the day, it is still a Mario game. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's the thing, too. Because, like, when you can control a bullet bill and fly around the entire map... Do you think it's going to be, like, a, a... Maybe... Now, I'm sure if you dig, maybe they've already said this. But do you think it's a, a timed thing? Like, you can only stay in the possessed form for a certain amount of time. I I feel like some of them might be, like, bullet bills and bomb bombs. But 
I, I don't know if like Goombas and humans or whatnot would be like that. Yeah, especially with like b bombs where they you know blow up would make. Yeah, well, like those ones in specific, like they don't have a huge movement advantage but bullet bills i think they've said like if you hit something you blow up or maybe they said there's a timed one for bullet bills um but i i, I don't think there'll be like a timed mechanic for all of them because it would really because they shut off you can control uh oh. lava bubbles oh geez that so you can just swim through lava and uh if there was a timer uh and it went off while you were halfway across something that would probably get old yeah. real quick but at the same time unless they and especially where they said enemies you can possess will be a little limited in some places so like, in, unless they have, like, a line of enemies you can chain. I, I don't know. I, I'm interested to see how, how, how the game plays. I, I mean, I, I've talked about it before. It's... It is, to me, how most people seem to react about Breath of the Wild of, like, I need a Switch. That is Mario Odyssey for me. And I can't really explain why, because I've never given a shit before now. Yeah. But... <laughs> Maybe you just want something colorful. I, I want Knack to be good, and the only way for that to happen is to buy a Mario game. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think... I, I, I could see me getting a Switch for Mario. Because, like... For, well, f I, I already bought Zelda on the Wii U, because... I mean, I bought Twilight Princess on the GameCube, and it's literally the same thing that happened with okay. that. Where it was near the end of the console's lifetime, so they just ported it to yeah. the next one. I, I mean... At, at least... At least with the Switch version of Breath of the Wild, they, like, upped the resolution and whatnot. Like, I don't think they did... Other than, like, flip it, since most people are right-handed, I don't think they did crap for the Wii version of Twilight Princess? Probably not. Yeah, uh, th that's something I hear a lot from people, actually. It, it doesn't... The mainstream media doesn't talk about it a ton, but, like, I think a lot of people did buy Breath of the Wild just on Wii U and are pretty content with it. Well, yeah, I'd like... I... I have... I, I didn't have any major problems with it. It ran fine. Um... I think there's been all of, like, maybe five times where, like, there's been, like, significant lag that I noticed. And, like, I heard people on the Switch saying, like, the same thing. It's just, you know, like, every, like, after a long time playing, occasionally the game would pause for a second or two. And I know when the game first came out, people were saying, like, they were lagging during the intro, yeah. like, tutorial on the switch and like i was like no nah, it ran fine my, my test of like you know i know i've shit on breath of the wild on here before but my, my test for like how well it actually ran because it's hard to it is even with people i trust uh that i don't know personally like people on, on youtube and people work at certain news sites that, that I, I trust their opinions I don't know. I felt like I just dis. I felt like everyone was lying to me when it came to how good Breath of the Wild was. And w when uh, uh, Carl, uh, our mutual friend, said, uh, "Oh yeah, no, the the frame rate in that game is fucking terrible," I was like, "Oh, so it actually does run bad." Y yeah, if Carl had a problem with it and was open about it, that. That's pretty interesting, because, like, I, I mean, clearly I yeah. like Nintendo, and I like Zelda quite a lot, too, but Carl's a huge fan compared to me. Like, he really likes Zelda. And, and I mean, 
look, I, I, I don't think dropping frames every once in a while is like a game ruining experience. Tons of games do it. Like when you're doing shit you're not supposed to. So like, and that's yeah. basically what he said. He's like, yeah, this game has more frame drops than like a normal game, but it doesn't take you out of it. So I was like, all right, well, that's a pretty honest review of it because but at the same time if your game has frame drops you can't be a perfect 10 fuck off every game review site that gave it a 10 oh it's by no means a perfect <laughs> game like I, I think I think Breath of the Wild is a great game it is not a perfect game it for this game in particular like a lot of people will talk about story games in Zelda and this one was pretty bare bones yeah. And and because of the shrines being everywhere, any I mean there's only like four actual dungeons in the game. The shrines took a the dungeons took like a big drop in quality cuz they just split up all the puzzles into 120 locations on the map. So 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 here's a question. Uh what is if you can think of any... Is there any game that you would consider perfect? Ah, uh, Colin, have you played uh, yes, Killer7 played yet? You. Okay. That was a joke, because <laughs> that is a mess of a game. <laughs> that, that game is an on-rails shooter. With a... I mean, Suda does the story, and it's... I mean, besides, like, um, his other stuff that I can't think of the name of, but uh, Silver Case, which is on Steam, uh, that game's story is also a mess. But, no, I I don't think there are oh, okay, no. perfect I, I, games. I, I mean, maybe, in, maybe in Asteroids. All honesty, I think there like, is a difference between a 10 out of 10 and a perfect. Because um, I... I weirdly like I don't think 10 out of 10 means perfect to, like to me it doesn't because no nothing no. is perfect. I I think I I think perfect has to be a case by case basis. Like if you like the music, story, gameplay, etc, then to you maybe that game is well, okay, so perfect. But I mean, for Killer 7, I like the music, story and gameplay, but you just heard me admit that oh, that game well, is not perfect. Yeah, I mean, there's games I like that I like a lot. Like, I'm fucking... I mean, you're... You're going to buy the no new David Cage No matter how Cage small game. your audience is, your audience primarily knows me as Mr. Binding of Isaac. I, for, I forgot that any time I talk about you with any other guest on the radio show, we mention <laughs> like a game that Isaac. you have no idea how ecstatic I was to find out after Birth Plus is getting a PS4 release, so I didn't have to buy the fucking Switch version because I had it in my hands. I was gonna do it, and uh, I'm pretty sure that it that's has. happened more than once over the past little while. And, and like, I love that game. But I rec like I wouldn't call it a ten out of ten. No, like even when when the game gets so big that the creator's like, okay, I'm yeah. done, and has fans do it, like it, maybe that's a signal for okay, so something. Okay, so I found a, a pretty interesting uh, best game ever list because there's there's two lists, and I actually like how they're separated. So one of them is just games um, ranked based off their average Metacritics. We that's an interesting. Well, I mean, way that's the it, like the normal way to do it. I guess is just look at review scores. But then the other way is video games by the numbers of times publishers have called them the best game ever. <laughs> Uh, so oh, we'll, we'll go through the Metacritic one first because I think that one will probably be a little more obvious. Obvi okay, we're not going to go through the whole list because I think it is like the top 50 of both. Okay, yeah, I was going to ask, like, like, are we going oh, no, we'll, through 200 we'll do, like, games the, here? Uh, it's ten, 10 or so. 
Because if we were going to do that, you should have started that at the start of the podcast instead of an hour in. Um, Th- three hour podcast. Well, well, I mean, go. no matter what, I got to duck out in thirty ish minutes. I ha- I have to call my parents. Uh, well, well, parent. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I was so, gonna say. Um, for for the Metacritic list, the lowest scored game on here is a ninety four, which ironically enough is Madden NFL two thousand two. I just think that's really funny. I, I'm I'm kind of surprised that it's a sports game. But I also don't think a lot of gaming sites will go out of their way to review sports games unless they maybe have a yeah. person who plays oh, right. them. And, like, even I think, like, maybe, like, sports-dedicated websites yeah. might make reviews on them. Well, actually, as someone who, uh, like, another example of, like, I I don't talk about it on the podcast, but, like, everyone who knows me knows I'm a big fan of uh, UFC, and uh, I I bought all of the Mm -hmm. games minus the the Dreamcast one, because I was, before I was interested in it. (laughs) And nobody owned a Dreamcast. But, like... (laughs) Their newest game is, like, fucking garbage. Like, I still play it because it scratches the itch, but it's terrible. And, like, I was actually pretty bummed out during EA's press conference they didn't show off the new one because they said they're making another one. But anyway, so uh, we'll do top... uh, Let's do top 15 just because it makes the list a little more interesting if I include the things from 10 to 15. So nothing ever from Metacritic has ever gotten a 100. Okay, well, that is, I mean, I'm not surprised. Um, Emoji Movie yeah, didn't true. even it, get a it, zero. It, now that a, a reasonable amount of people have reviewed it, I think it's at like a nine now. I, I think, like, one good review bumped it from a 0 to a yeah, 3. Yeah, that makes sense. So, uh, the bottom of this list, we got Half-Life 2. Uh, I'm not surprised to see Half-Life 2 but, on either so, of so, these yeah, lists. So, right, right away, a game that uh, I've never played, it, but I hear enough people talk about that. I'm like, yeah, I agree with that being on a list of best games ever. Yeah, um... Uh, if... Personally, for me, if I was going to pick a Source Engine mm-hmm. game, I would pick TF2. I mean, I would too. I, I, I gave it my game of... I think TF2 was my game of the year. Uh, 2011, No, maybe? it was 2011. It was whatever year The Last of Us came out, because it beat The Last of Us for me. Gosh, I don't know. Was that 2011? I, I only picked 2011, because uh, that was the year... I started going to the same college as you. Yes, Last of Us was 2013. So so that, so that means between 2011 and 2013, you were still yeah, playing TF2. I, I, I liked that game. I, you know what? I, I recent, like, recently, me and John were like, hey, you want to play some TF2? And we convinced somebody to install it. And we, we just played a couple rounds, and I was like, man, I... And I was like, I didn't even have to install it because I have, uh, as soon as I got this laptop, the first thing I installed on it was TF2, despite probably playing less than two hours mm. since I got it in September. But it's just one of those games I like to have installed in case I, you know, get the urge to be like, yeah, I, I could play TF2. And I mean, if, if, if Overwatch didn't come out, I'd probably get the urge to play TF2 more often than I do. Uh, so, so next up, uh, NFL 2K1. I, I've heard... Got, got a night. From people that like sports and sports games, I've heard the 2K games are you know, quite I think, good. No, that's the second 2K game. So, uh... And it was only on the Dreamcast. 
Oh, jeez. Uh, then we got the, the first Halo. Oh, yeah. I mean, a, a Halo yeah. was going to be uh, on there somewhere. Grand Theft Auto 3. I'm kind of so surprised by that. From here up, we're going to see a lot of the same companies and sequels. Now, now that you said that, I, I, <laughs> I, I'm not surprised anymore. But at, at the same time, I, I mean, I... I I guess three is the first one in that yes. style, so it makes sense. And it's also the game that, like, there are people who only would buy that game yeah. and that system because I mean, they played it at a friend's house. I would put Vice City over three, but I wouldn't fight I, with yeah, I someone won. who I would well, I, I would over Vice City. I would also put San Andreas over three. Oh, that's a good point. But... At the same point, like Vice City and especially San Andreas are the games you would play at somebody's house and be like, dang, I kind of want to pick up a copy of that game for myself. And then you would play that game and realize you didn't unlock anything till uh, playing through the story and you wanted to end yourself. Uh, So then we got uh, one of your babies, Metroid Prime. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Samus Returns comes uh, out in, a, in a few played, months. I've only ever played the very first Metroid game, and it was garbage. Um, that genre, that yeah, genre of game, it's on the took it's up on. until a few years ago to get good enough for me to enjoy them. Uh, I I think a big problem with especially the original Metroid is that it, yeah, that it certainly was my entire that. problem with it. <laughs> And like like Zero Mission on the Game Boy Advance, I think, is a good update to that game because it adds a map. But I I, I mean, Castlevania, Symphony of Light, and whatnot, those all yeah. also have maps. I I don't want to have to draw a map. Then we got uh, talked about earlier, Perfect Dark. It, is that specifically yes. the N64 version? I, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that that is better than Future, but I guess based on reviewers at the time, after all the hype of uh, GoldenEye and Perfect Dark just being I mean, a I'm better GoldenEye, that, well, it makes sense. See, I would put GoldenEye over Perfect Dark, but I think in the other list, when it switches to amount of... Uh, sites and magazines that call it best game ever, I think we would see those two switch places. Uh, yeah, so probably. This is when it... Okay, so after position nine and one other outlier, things get weird. So from he, from nine up, everything is, some, is a sequel to something we've already heard. Other than a weird outlier. <laughs> but, so, n- number nine... Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3. I did not get into the series uh, till 4. I think I started at 2. But. Yeah, I hear 2 is a big uh, entry Well, point uh, 2 is on this list. Uh, so <laughs> next up, uh, we'll just go quickly through these next ones because we already talked about them all. Uh, Grand Theft Auto 5, uh, Super Mario Galaxy 2, Super Mario Galaxy 1, Breath of the Wild. Uh, number four, Soul Calibur. Yes. The first one? Uh, uh, wait, does it specify no, a version or anything? Because I, 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 I feel like it's only on the Man, Dreamcast. Dreamcast. cleaning up on this list. Because, well, I know, like, Soul Edge and whatnot are on the Dreamcast, and I know, like... A big selling point of the Dreamcast, besides Crazy Taxi, Sonic, and I don't know, probably something else. It is Shen- specifically Shenmue, maybe the Dreamcast uh, version, I, not the arcade version. Yeah, well, yeah, I know a, a big selling point of the Dreamcast was Soul Calibur, because fighting game fans are will buy anything. Hey, hey, with okay, a fighting so game. Our, our top three. You give me guesses, I would have guessed two of these pretty quickly. See, I'm kind of curious, because, like, GTA Five already showed up, 
And like I expected that no, to be in the top three somewhere. No, but in the top three. Um, well, I mean, I I don't think you said San Andreas yet, and I'll honestly be surprised. I sure did. If four Coming in number out. three, Grand Theft Auto Four. I, I'm surprised, but like I, now, I guess now, it I think makes we both sense, know but... even before we I looked up this list, we know what number one is. Because you haven't said it yet, yeah, yeah it, I have I mean, a good idea. Spoilers: It's Ocarina of Time. Because <laughs> of you. Okay, really? you know what? That's not what I thought you were gonna say. Uh, it's number two, no, Final, Final Fantasy, Fantasy Seven. Uh, doesn't show up. Oh, okay. actually, we're gonna keep you keep you hanging for spot number two. I'm gonna scroll down and see the first time you see a Final Fantasy game. Yeah, cause, cause the first I, I mean, Final you, Fantasy. like, like we talked about earlier, but, uh, Final Fantasy VII and Ocarina of Time are the two games that are like, hey, these uh, are the best games of all time. The only Final Fantasy on this list, position forty-five or forty-four, sorry, nine. Is it ten? Is it ten or th- not? Like you, I'm. I know I nine's one of your it. favorites, and I'm I'm surprised. To, I'm but like seeing games that beat it out, like uh, NFL Madden 2003 or uh, Little Big Planet. Uh, or, or, uh, or Todd's favorite now game. Now I'm sure Skyrim. you know this, but I do. Ah, uh, Skyrim. Uh, I don't know if you know Colin, but uh, I don't care much for Little Big Planet. No, I wouldn't know from playing with it, playing it with you uh, a bunch. Uh, uh, I, I think it's clear that my favorite levels are just the ones where you avoid explosions for a long amount of time, and that's about it. And even that I get sick uh, of after so, uh, 20 minutes. So, the mysterious number two spot, you give me a hundred guesses I never would have guessed. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. I forgot I you said that earlier. I looked at the list, so when I was like, I jumped in on two, I was just like... Oh yeah, and then I saw it was number two. I was like, "Oh, jeez." So uh, now switching over to the uh, the yeah. version of the list that I think is more interesting of greatest game of all time. Uh, let's spoil it again. Ocarina of Time is number one again. Oh well, yeah, they've re-released that game. Uh, if you include eShop, like four now, or five now, actually, times. Now, actually, the top ten of this is pretty different actually i guess we did top 15 so well i feel like this one would be a little different because i i feel like because you said this was the list where publishers claimed it was the best game it i feel like re-releases of games kind of i play in more heavily but i meant like retail outfits and gaming mags and stuff like that not the actual publisher themselves oh oh okay so like still critics and stuff like that yeah it still makes sense that ocarina time is number one on both i guess i i am surprised to not see final fantasy 7 okay well i will tell you final fantasy is in the top 15 of this list uh, yeah, okay. So we've got Super Mario Brothers three, coming at fifteen. Yeah, I, I mean, I I always prefer World, but I know there's some people who really uh, will get him uh, by the three. First Metal Gear, or Metal Gear Solid. I forgot seeing as Metal Gear is a different game. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I I mean, at this point, I think everybody knows that you mean Solid when you talk about Metal Gear, like. 95 percent of the time uh then we got uh the first mario kart Ooh, ooh, on the super nintendo uh yeah that's a rough game like well the like that that was the game i was talking about when i was like that game is undoubtedly just better today like why would you play super mario when you could play the new one on the wii oh no well here's the thing here's the thing about mario kart I always forget the Super mm-hmm. Nintendo version exists. So I thought you were talking oh, no, about 64. Which 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 I I, I get like yeah, play 8 cuz 8's a pretty great game. But uh 
uh, like, like, 64 was the first version of Mario Kart I played, and, uh, I don't think I found out there was a Super Nintendo version till uh, mm. ten years later. Like, it's a, it's a rough game. I think the first time I knew there was a Super Nintendo version is whenever they had, like, a throwback course in one of the later ones on, like, GameCube or something that said, hey, this is from the Super Nintendo. So then we got, uh, Resident Evil 4, of course. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I remember the Christmas I got it, which, I mean, it was a few years after it came out, but, uh, and I knew I was getting it as a gift because it's what I asked for, but I remember still being excited to, to get it, and it's, uh, it, it's, besides the remake on GameCube, it's, uh, I mean, it's one of the survival horror games I've gone back to play yeah, the most. I think I'm in the same boat. I mean, I am one of the, like, five people who bought it on iOS. Uh, yeah, and I, I've played the iOS version. I've played one level uh, on, on whatever device you had it on. on iPod Touch. Point. And... And, uh... The part in Resident Evil 4 where you first deal with uh, the parasites yep. like coming out of somebody's heads and you fight yep. like two of them at once. Uh, in the game, that's a small section of a level. <laughs> in the iOS version, that was sure the entire was. level. <laughs> I mean, that game capped out at like four enemies on screen. Uh, then Half-Life 2. Shocker. And now, again, yeah. Much like I predicted, um, Perfect Dark nowhere to be seen, but Goldeneye, 007. Uh, then okay, Super yeah. Mario World. I'm not surprised to see that higher than three. Like I, I know a lot of fans of three like consider three to be a better game, but I, I think World is a great game and. I can. think everybody has played World that plays games. I think, yeah, I think my I don't know if I could pick a favorite between three and World, but it's definitely one of those things where I think both are the right answer. Yeah. Uh, then Super Metroid. That's not a shock. Hey, that one. Guess what? It uh, kind of has a map. I I I feel like. Yeah, I, 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 it has a proper map, if I recall. I, I don't know, like, uh, despite how big a Metroid fan I am, I, I don't care much for Super Metroid. And we... Which some Metroid fans consider that, and I guess Prime, the only Metroid games uh, worth Street playing? Street Fighter 2. Yeah, I mean, I'm not surprised. I'm surprised where this is like gaming mags and critics, but like, like I, I mean, I said it earlier. Fighting games yep. fans are crazy. Uh, actually, I have to look it up. Um, but like somebody had tweeted the other day, like, "Hey, does anybody know how many copies Street Fighter mm -hmm. Two sold on the Switch?" Because they were trying to figure out if it beat. Uh, Street Fighter Five in sales. I think it did actually in, but like, you had to like nitpick the markets. Yeah, probably. Uh, I think. I don't know if Japan like cares about Street Fighter Five. Like, like, like. I, I mean, they care, but I don't think their fighting game fans would care to play on a console or whatnot when they could just play yeah. the arcade version. Uh, then we got Chrono Trigger, a game I've never played. Uh, one of my favorite RPGs. Uh, followed by one of my favorite RPGs, uh, Link to the Past. <laughs> it's funny, despite... how often you'll shit on Nintendo that uh, Link to the Past is one of your favorites. I mean... 
it's it's also f- it's also funny because Link to the Past is probably one of the Zelda games I have played the I least mean, often. In all honesty, other than the ones I haven't played, I think Link to the Past is also one of the games I've played the least of. Uh, okay, so it's just like probably. a nostalgia. Like, I imagine case. if I replayed it, I wouldn't like it as much. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm not a big fan of Link to the Past, and, like, I, I've only beaten it a few times. And going back, I feel like it's a bit of a slog but like my favorite zelda games in that style are the ones on the game like boy the color oracle of seasons or whatever and like i'll i'll fu- yeah oracle of seasons and oracle of ages and i'll fully agree that those games also have parts that aren't very good because uh you have to do rhythm games to oh, progress good. that reminds me i don't remember the name of the game but there's some uh That's- turn-based rpg coming out where it's got like DDR style controls for the combat and I am all over that. Yeah, well, yeah, I know you're a big or at least back in the day you were a big DDR. Uh, fan. I think if I didn't live in an apartment I'd probably pick pick it up. <laughs> uh, and then we got uh, Mario 64. Yay! And coming in Yay. at number two. What? Which I think should actually, I think should is should be considered a better game than Ocarina of Time. Uh, yeah, is it The actually. Last of Us? Because, <laughs> like, not even you saying that, but me thinking about, uh, well, what else did critics uh, rate uh, super uh, high? Uh, no, the, oh, the right, real the answer is, is Tetris. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Which I, I think uh, is I a mean, better game than Ocarina of Time. I mean, you know, I was saying no games are perfect. Tetris is perfect because it's very simple. Uh, yeah, uh, it, you, you ran that's my point. Tetris. Uh, anybody can pick up Tetris and as long as they can use the controls, can usually figure it out in a couple minutes. And, like, as long as you're not playing Versus or anything, like, it's an easy game to understand how to play, and you can almost play infinitely. Well, uh, I guess that's that's our, our show, folks, because I, I get a, I have prior arrangements. You got to call your mom. I to talk to my mother. Um, you get, yeah. get a, dude. Get, get an anime you wanna you wanna recommend? Uh, has it, well, I mean, have you uh, recommended you know Boozle Rankin on the show yet? I, I don't have. remember. Okay, well, I mean, that's not the actual recommendation you, I, I was gonna go with, but uh, that I, I mean, Boozle Rankin is a series Colin and I both I, enjoy I'll, quite a bit. I'll give you two recommendations because I was gonna throw out two anyway, so. Uh, okay, uh, uh, I was going to recommend uh, a series I haven't finished watching the anime for yet. Uh, I-, I was going to recommend uh, the series Monster, which I'm sure you've probably heard of at least once. Yes, I've heard of it. I'm not um, sure about it, though. It, it, it's, it's like a mystery thriller. It, it's about a doctor that saves a young boy's life over, like, uh, I don't remember who, like a like a politician or something yeah. like the mayor of the city or whatever and it com- it comes back to bite him in the butt and more they than the one because like he doesn't get the promotion and his fiance divorces him and all this stuff but uh like seven years later the boy he saves grows up and just starts just starts killing Neat. people and because the doctor was the one that brought him back to life after the accident he feels he's responsible to end uh, his life okay so and I, I googled uh, monster anime just to see if I could find it, but of course I got Monster Monsume. <laughs> you know what? Uh, I haven't watched that one. I read some of the manga. Uh, if you if you like Monster Girls, uh, and etchy series, yeah. I mean, then go for it. <laughs> uh, but Monster's good. Uh, it was recommended to me. I don't remember who. But basically, like, when I started getting, like, back into watching anime in high school, somebody was like, 
oh, you watch Death Note, you might like this. Uh, and I, I would definitely say Monster is kind of like Death Note in that there's the mystery and battle of the minds and whatnot, but it's definitely Death Note for a crowd who does not go into Hot Topic, I guess. I mean, I mean, honestly, that's a pretty good recommendation for me because I was just – it's not my recommendation, just – very weird situation when my non-nerd related <laughs> roommate, I, I came home and she was watching Death Note. It's very strange. Ah. Uh, so, well, you know what? It's funny because I recently came up a way to describe Death Note to people who don't watch Death Note. Because uh, it's, uh, do you like JoJo fights? And do you want to see JoJo fights without them physically fighting? So do you want to see JoJo fights from what the normal people would see? Well, well, no, it's basically like JoJo, they're always like, ah, you yeah. knew my plan, but actually, my plan a, was actually this. And, and that's a lot of what Death Note is, at least yeah. in the first half. I mean, it, it, I mean, the second half is quite similar, but... It kind of loses itself with, oh no, we got to stop a terrorist and whatnot. So I, I'm going to throw out two. Uh, one very popular. Uh, one not popular at all. Uh, Bokuno is the popular one. Uh, no, because I won't Academia. watch that garbage. I've, I've gotten in fights okay, with good. people about that. <laughs> Uh, it's an okay series, but it's shonen, and it basically no, starts with a. That's tournament exactly arc, so what I said. I was like, "Look, it's just... it's so shonen that like I I saw a trailer, and I'm like, I know the entire series now." Uh, so. Yeah. I am. Going to watch. A p Pokemon. So uh, that's the super popular one. So uh, go go watch Pokemon if you haven't watched it in a while. Um, I, I know, like, I, I have, like, I don't know, 16 or 17 seasons downloaded. I actually am starting, like, and I already forget what season I said I was going to watch. Uh, well, see, I started from the beginning, and, like, season one, it, it's all right, and I finish, I finish, I only finished the first two, and it's because it's a series, like, yeah. very hard to binge watch. It's something you put an episode on, you watch it, and then you maybe you watch something else or you go to bed. All oh, right, I am jumping to one of the newer ones, and I'm going to watch uh, X and Y. I, uh, I'm i going to look up X and Y because I, I don't think I watched much of it. Like, I think I've seen a few episodes of, like, every season. Oh, yeah, X and Y has... Uh, the girl sure. or whatnot, doesn't it? I don't know shit about it. Just that's real general for me talking about Pokemon. It's the one with the girl. Oh yeah, it's a girl <laughs> companion every season. I mean, like Serena. It's a little is. disheartening for me right now, seeing that it has 140 episodes. That's way more than I wanted to sign up for. Yeah, no, I was thinking of Serena in Pokemon X and Y. Which I, I I didn't see a lot of, but uh, I I know when that was airing, a big draw of that series was, hey, this girl is like Ash's old childhood friend, and will they get together? Uh, uh, I'm gonna spoil it for you, Colin. Pokemon Pokemon is the oh, same; oh, nothing aware. ever changes. And then uh, the other series is something I have not thought about since I read the manga uh, in like grade 8, grade 9 is it, it sure is it fucking elemental is, I, I was like, how'd you know about that but I forgot I tweeted about it uh, now, now I never read the manga I think I have like the first volume or something around here somewhere but like I, I remember you you had it and you recommended it to me and I was like yeah okay I'll check it out and I watched it and I was like hey this was a good show and I think it was around the same time that, uh, or a little while after that, like, everybody we knew yep. watched Soul Eater. And, uh, and I mean, both you and me were like, yeah, I mean, 
Soul Eater's pretty good, but uh, y'all check out Elemental Glade. I, I mean, that's basically the the review I can the non spoiler review it, is it. If you liked Soul Eater, it's that but better. With with, with to give it a con to yeah. go along with that, uh, the art style is worse because it's generic anime art style. But yeah, the art style is worse. Um... It focuses more on the relationship between a person and the Yeah, weapon. so if you ever wanted to see... Uh, what's the girl from Soul Eater's name? If you wanted to see Maka... Maka. Uh, get it on with... Uh, what's what's the things? Uh, his oh, name great. is literally Soul. Uh, if you wanted Soul. to see uh, them uh, be more romantically involved, check out Elemental Gallade. Yeah, his his name is Soul Evans, by the way. Is that it's Soul not Soul Edge. It's not Soul Eater, but they uh they literally call him Soul Eater as a nickname at one point, I think. Like like I think it's like, hey, get over here, Soul Eater Evans. Yeah, I mean if if that's Hey, since we're talk since we're talking about uh Soul Eater, if you've watched the anime, uh read the manga cuz it has a completely different plot. <laughs> Ew. It ends completely differently. <laughs> I mean, now nah, I was going to say that's the same with most manga, but most manga just keeps going, doesn't change anything. Yeah, most Soul Eater is literally the case of I want a Soul Eater Brotherhood because it's. They eventually divulge from where the manga went. Much like Soul Eater, or Full Metal Alchemist did when, uh, the movie for the first series is about them in Nazi era Germany. That sounds fantastic. Uh, you know what? A lot of people will say, "Hey, the first series of Full Metal Alchemist isn't that good because it doesn't follow the manga." Uh, I think it's a fine series, and I think that movie in particular, to cap it off, is hilarious because uh, they have like the leader of like the Nazi army or whatever. Well, no, of course but not. they can't use Hitler, right? Well, like why would they use Hitler? So they just like design a character and uh she she doesn't look anything like Hitler or anything. But for all purposes, she's yeah. basically girl Hitler. Well, well, with that stellar soul eater recommendation Soul Eater and Full Metal Alchemist original uh, series. <laughs> my my plug are just in the fucking de de description, which uh, you can look at any time instead of having to listen to two hours of this to because uh, nobody listens to the full thing. Uh, I will. Uh, 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 the uh, only person will, who does is me, and I might skip this episode. <laughs> be going up tomorrow. Uh, provided it gets processed in time, because that can be pretty lengthy. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, I have to send Colin my audio this time instead of uh, him just it. If it does it. get done in time, uh, I will link Brandon's show. I, I assume you're doing it tomorrow? All right. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. am. Uh, Actually, you know what? Before we end, uh, now... Uh, the last episode, you said you would put Marsha's yeah, info yeah, sure in the didn't. description, and you didn't put you yeah, didn't put a gosh yeah, dang thing. I, I knew at the time I had a reason, and I knew I was prepared to answer that question, but now I don't remember what the answer was. But uh, but I had a reason. Oh right, uh, it's uh, she specifically wanted me to plug her more popular Tumblr, which I don't follow, so I couldn't find it. <laughs> Good. Uh, but I mean, I, I, I'm not popular on anything. But, so uh, <laughs> I'll take the likes yeah, and favorites I, I where I can my get them. Small audience to you, and listen and listen to your show tomorrow. All right. I look forward to following oh, myself it's later. It's a good one. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.